All right, we're going to start this journey into quantum mechanics with the discovery that kicked off everything, right? So this one question that Max Planck was trying to answer, what he discovered led to an entire new field of physics, right? And changed the way we think about everything on an atomic scale. So the question that Max Planck was trying to answer was posed by another scientist named Gustav Kirchhoff, the same guy from Kirchhoff's Laws. He was asking, how does the intensity of radiation emitted by a black body depend on the frequency of the radiation and the temperature of the body? So there's a whole bunch of stuff there. So first off, let's start off by saying, when we say radiation, we're talking about electromagnetic radiation, right? Visible light, infrared, ultraviolet, gamma rays, right? We're not talking about nuclear power plants or atomic bombs or any of that yet. Okay, we'll get to that. Next, what's a black body? Okay, a black body is something that is a perfect emitter or absorber of radiation, electromagnetic radiation. So this is an example of a black body, right? It's not a perfect black body. There's really no such thing as a perfect black body. But if you look at this can, it's got an opening on the front of it, right? So if you look at that opening, that opening appears black. Even if you shine a light on it, it still appears black. There's no light getting out of there. And so what's happening is all the light is being absorbed in that little hole. So this is a really good absorber of radiation. And if something is a really good absorber of radiation, that means it's also a really good emitter of radiation. Okay, so the next thing has to do with radiation. So all objects give off radiation proportional to their temperature. So for instance, if I take a piece of metal and I put it on a blowtorch, I can get this thing really hot. It'll start glowing and it'll start giving off visible light. But watch what happens as this thing cools down. The light gets dimmer and dimmer and it starts looking like there's no radiation, right? But that's only because your eyes can't see it. So let's look at what happens if I look at it in infrared radiation with an infrared camera. So you can see that this thing is still pretty hot. It's giving off a lot of radiation. This thing would burn you if you tried to grab it. Another thing that gives off radiation that you may not realize is people. So humans give off radiation. You have a body temperature, right? So that means that you are giving off radiation right now. It's not visible, right? Because then you'd be like 3000 Kelvin and you'd be dead. But if you look at yourself through an infrared camera, you can see the light coming off. If I have a person in a dark room and I don't know where they're at, if I look in infrared, I can easily see the glow of that person coming from where they are. Okay, so let's look at the observations that they were making at the time. So the way they would do this, they had this big giant oven, right? It was this big fancy electrically heated thing. And it was basically an oven with a hole punched in the side of it so that radiation could come out, right? And so this radiation would come out here and they would use prisms and diffraction gratings. And we've already talked about diffraction gratings, how they take light and they split it up into different wavelengths, right? So this light would come through here and spread out with the prism and then use a diffraction grating and it would spread out and it would make a spectrum, right? And so then they'd shine that on a screen and they'd move a detector down the line and they could see the different wavelengths that show up and how much of each wavelength showed up. So when they looked at this radiation that was coming out, and they graphed the intensity versus the wavelength, right? This is something to notice here. This is wavelength. Wavelength is inversely proportional to energy. So stuff over here is high energy. Stuff over here is low energy. So the graph that they got when they would plot intensity versus wavelength looked kind of like that, okay? And there were two laws that they knew at the time that worked. So the first one is called the Stefan-Boltzmann Law. And the Stefan-Boltzmann Law basically says the power emitted by something is equal to some constant times temperature to the fourth power. Okay, so if I double the temperature, this is big here, if I double the temperature, the power emitted by that black body is going up by 16 because 2 to the fourth power is 16. And the other one they knew was called Wien's Displacement Law. So Wien's Displacement Law says that this maximum wavelength right here, so the peak wavelength, that would be my peak wavelength, is equal to some constant divided by the temperature of the black body. So let's say this is for something that has a temperature of 5,000 Kelvin, right? Wien's displacement law tells you, like, let's say I do one that's 4,000 Kelvin, right? The curve may look something like this, right? So at 4,000 Kelvin, see how my peak wavelength has shifted over? And for something even cooler, like 3000 Kelvin, it's going to shift even more this way. So maybe like this. So at 3000 Kelvin, my peak wavelength is right there, right? So you can see that peak wavelength here is proportional to the temperature of the object, right? That was Wien's displacement law. So these two things are nice. 
but neither of them tell us what Planck wanted to figure out, which is the relationship between frequency or wavelength and temperature and intensity, right? So these are both power and temperature, wavelength and temperature, right? But I need something that tells me everything, something that could predict these curves. So at the time there were two models, right? And so here's again what this curve looks like. It kind of looks like this and then it tails off at the end. That's intensity versus wavelength. So the first one was called the Rayleigh-Jeans law and Rayleigh-Jeans was like this. And Rayleigh-Jeans law predicted correctly things at long wavelengths, but at short wavelengths or high energy things, it predicted what's called the ultraviolet catastrophe. It basically said that energy is going to be infinite. So if you start making this thing hotter and hotter and hotter, you're going to start giving off infinite amounts of ultraviolet radiation, which makes no sense, right? Because of conservation of energy. So that one was obviously wrong. And Planck, a lot of people say that Planck was trying to solve the ultraviolet catastrophe. Like Planck didn't care about this because Rayleigh-Jeans law was based on statistical mechanics. And statistical mechanics, like when we talked about entropy, it's based on probability. Planck thought that was all garbage. He didn't think probability had anything to do with this. He was trying to make this work without statistical mechanics. So he wasn't worried about Rayleigh-Jeans law. He was worried about uh, what was called the Wien distribution. So Wien, you know, same Wien. His name was Wilhelm Wien. His distribution worked for all of this stuff, but then at the long wavelength, it didn't fit. So that was Wien's distribution right there. So in this case, everything fit over here, but this stuff didn't work. So what Planck did was he said, okay, let's try to work from the solution and work back to the problem, right? Kind of like if you have math homework and you're trying to figure out something, but you see the answer in the back of the book, but you got to show your work, right? He started with the answer and he said, okay, let me do some math and figure out how I can make this work. So the way he approached trying to solve Wien's distribution and make it work was he said, okay, I'm going to take this black body and I'm going to pretend that this black body oven right here really consists of a bunch of little positive charges that are vibrating, kind of like harmonic oscillators, right? So it's like a bunch of masses on a spring, right? We've talked about that before. And so all these things are vibrating around and we already know vibrating charges create electromagnetic waves, right? And so that's what's causing the black body radiation. Okay, so he does it and it looks like a success, man. Like he thinks he's got it, this everything fits, right? But then they start collecting more data, the experiments get better, right? And again, this doesn't work at these long wavelengths. So he goes back to the drawing board, right? So he makes an important distinction here that changes everything. So a scientist named Boltzmann had been working with entropy before. And Boltzmann said that energy, when he was uh, working out entropy, he said that energy has to come in discrete packets instead of being any continuous value. So Planck took a page from that and he said, okay, I'm gonna set the energy equal to some integer n times h times the frequency, and h is Planck's constant. So he was just using this as a math trick to kind of make it work. When Boltzmann did it, he took a limit and he was able to make it go away. So it just made the math work, right? So Planck was trying to do this just to make the math work. Because again, Planck didn't like this idea that things would be quantized. But when he did this, the data fit these models perfectly. They could predict the temperature of the thing, they could predict what the curve was going to look like every single time. So the implications of this were really big, right? So if you think about what this says, this was like heresy at the time. Saying that energy comes in discrete packets, some multiple of this number h times f. What this means is the energy that these uh, oscillators that he was modeling could give off had to come in a multiple of this. It had to be a multiple of h times f. You couldn't have any value you want. It's almost like stairs. If you're climbing a set of stairs versus a hill, if you go up stairs instead of a hill, you can only be here or here or here or here. Those are discrete values as opposed to walking up a hill. If I go the same height on a hill, I can exist anywhere on the hill, right? This is a continuous set of values. He was saying energy had to come quantized in discrete values. And so from here, from this equation, we get the energy for a photon of light that's given off by a black body, right? I just get rid of that energy. And this equation says that the energy of any photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. This was big. This changed everything. And so in another video, we'll talk about how Einstein took this and he showed how light follows this and how light could behave like a particle. And that really blew everything up. So things to remember from this, how temperature relates to a black body curve, right? So as the wavelength goes this way, as the energy gets larger, that peak wavelength moves and we can relate the peak wavelength to the temperature through Wien's displacement. And the most important thing, that the energy of a photon emitted by a black body or absorbed 
is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency.